Welcome to They Think It's All Over. Helping out David this week is a comedian who's now so busy he hasn't got time to visit his beloved West Ham anymore. Still, the good news is he's freed up another 2,000 seats at Upton Park. <laughs> Bill Jupiter. <laughs> David's other guest is an Olympic silver medalist at 400 metres who, in his new job as the BBC athletics pundit, spent most of the summer with Des Lynham. At least that's what Des told his missus. <laughs> Roger Black. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is Britain's former number one women's tennis player, who retired from the game ten years ago and hasn't played competitive tennis since, which means she's still ranked number two in the country. <laughs> behind Virginia Wade. <laughs> Annabelle Croft. <laughs> We open the show by looking at some of the pathetic excuses our sporting heroes give to explain away their actions. Gary, Rory and Annabelle's team first. Earlier this year, Britain's Paula Radcliffe broke the world record at five miles in a race at Balmoral. This is a tremendous run by Paula Radcliffe, and it could be the fastest five miles ever run on the road. Horses vary, that's true, but it's still a nice one. <laughs> The first woman under 25 minutes. Now, afterwards, a strange thing happened. When Paula went to the lavatory, Sue Barker decided to go to the cubicle with her. What we want to know is, what was Sue Barker's excuse for joining Paula Radcliffe for what is traditionally a solo activity? <laughs> so, they actually did go into the loo together? They went to the loo together, yes, um, straight after the race. And was it actually filmed? Yeah, it is. It's, I've got a copy of it, anyway. <laughs> More sort of normal tennis player behaviour. Is think? it? All I was told was not to drop the safe in the shower. But with women. Uh, with women. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps if they told you more about playing tennis, you'd have worn more. <laughs> <laughs> I asked um, Billie Jean King about that, and she nearly dropped her pipe. She was showing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was her pipe. You know, the coaches of women's tennis had spent more time coaching tennis rather than what you do with your soap in the shower. Maybe Britain would be in better shape. That's sort of what I said before. Isn't it? <laughs> I do this every time I come up. <laughs> I have a kit, and then I wake up ten minutes in, do one of your gags, and f*** the phone. But... <laughs> Sorry about that. Does it... that get cut? No. <laughs> It'll be yeah. your stuff that gets cut. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 oh. I can take it, I can take it. <laughs> Hiding from Des Lynham? Mm-hmm. Mm. Not there. No. Well, he wanted a good hiding from. <laughs> <laughs> oh! You see, you think he's asleep, but he's thinking. <laughs> no, he talks in his sleep. Yeah. So, uh, a toilet in Balmoral. Were they looking for Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, talking to Charlie, is it something to do something with drugs? Was um, Sue Barker the celebrity urine sampler taker that <laughs> celebrity yeah, for I'll, that day? I'll probably give you three points for that. Here's Paula with the answer. I needed to carry out a drug test after the race and there weren't any facilities available at the event. So we called in the Queen's physician to carry out the drug test. But you need an independent female witness to observe the giving of the sample. And Sue Barker was the only one available. So David Coleman kindly volunteered. Uh, just to make that clear to any lawyers David watching, Cole. David Coleman kindly volunteered Sue Barker for the job. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the Queen's toilet that Paula was using. She knew that because there was a sign on the wall saying, now get someone to wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Barker, incidentally, has publicly criticised this programme, saying it's not as good as Question of Sport because it contains too many remarks that just aren't witty. Like this, for example. Piss off, Sue. <laughs> David 
Phil and Roger, a sport we've never featured before on They Think It's All Over, but given what sports the BBC has got left, don't be surprised if you see it again. <laughs> super bikes. Here's the finest super biker in history, Britain's very own three times world champion Carl Fogarty. This is him winning an Albacete in Spain. But a couple of months ago, at the peak of his career, Fogarty announced plans for his retirement. What excuse did he give for pulling the plug on all that non-stop success, David's team? Had he run out of petrol? <laughs> <laughs> Can you wear his knees out? Well, like Ron Davis. Did you realise that superbike is the second most dangerous sport on the world? On, on the, the world? On the world. <laughs> <laughs> Did you realise that superbiking is the second most dangerous sport? <laughs> Take three. Uh, did you realise that superbiking? <laughs> Take four. Thank you. David. Come on, David. Did you realise? <laughs> on the world. Though, Come on. Red. On earth. I'll tell you what, the punchline's going to have to be bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> did you realise that superbiking is the second most dangerous sport on earth after going out with Stan Collymore? <laughs> That joke would have been relevant when you started it. Did you really? <laughs> uh, did he run out of petrol? <laughs> <laughs> did he have ambitions to be a pizza delivery man? <laughs> <laughs> to be the first man in him to deliver a hot pizza? <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about having pizza <laughs> delivered, anyway? <laughs> well, the staff have them a lot. You know, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just get uh, left out of the European Championship team, team so he thought Sodak was going to retire? No, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Big no, 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 he, he chose to retire. Belt. He didn't have it thrust upon him. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we were all very upset, Roger, when you were dropped from the 4x400 four uh, relay team, especially when we saw who they picked instead. <laughs> <laughs> is Hector the tax inspector and how little dignity would you have to have to take cash to stand next to that stupid cartoon character? <laughs> <laughs> That's a photograph taken on Clapham Common, that one. <laughs> <laughs> is is it possible to see the uh, still of the chap that we're talking about? Can we see a picture of Carl Fogarty? Did he become the finest swordsman in all Spain? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Did you realise? No. No. No idea. No. Any ideas over here? Is it anything to do with that um, gay biker on the Isle of Man who spent all day lapping Douglas? <laughs> yeah. By any chance? Yeah. yeah. No, but well done for trying. <laughs> no ideas? Okay, well, here is Carl Fogarty to tell us the reason. Well, I've been all over the world racing bikes, and uh, about the only country I haven't seen is my own country, so. I want to go down uh, and see Cornwall here, it's really great, so that's why I was thinking of retiring, so I could go and uh, have a holiday while I'm still young enough to enjoy it down in Cornwall. <laughs> well, <laughs> so Carl's been to Nice and the Isle of Greece, but he's never been to Cornwall. <laughs> Much safer in Cornwall now, of course, because the Beast of Bodmin lives in London, don't you, Rory? <laughs> Incidentally, Cornwall was once famous for its tin industry, but the demand for tin dried up when Barry Sheen retired. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have no points and Gary's team have three. We carry on with our author-author round. Many top sportsmen have played like complete rubbish, but only a selected few have written complete rubbish. David's team, whose cerebral outpourings are these? Numbers are the thing with me. I have this thing about four. I don't know why four. My favourite used to be five and then seven. <laughs> then I got into this thing about thirteen, where nothing would be done in fours, because four and nine are thirteen. <laughs> I don't know where nine came from. I got it into my head because four and nine are 13. That's like six and seven. I can't bear to see them together because that's 13 again. So when I go out onto the park, I won't go out in sixth or seventh. I'll either be fifth or eighth. And five and eight, of course, are 13. <laughs> David's team, who do you think was that sporting Einstein? <laughs> It was either Bert or Ernie from Sesame Street. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was it Rory, with a, Rory with a Chinese menu in front of him? 
I don't want to be critical, Dave, but is it you talking about your test scores? <laughs> is it Bruce Grovelar pretending he doesn't know anything about next weekend's football results? <laughs> It's a footballer, isn't it? It's got to be a footballer. Maybe. Oh. I think it's uh, <laughs> your friend and mine, the people's math magician himself. Little Jody Paul Gascoigne. Yeah, like absolutely. I'll give you three points Paul. for that. Yeah, Done. that was in fact Paul Gascoigne. <laughs> In 1996, Gazza bought his wife Cheryl a new pair of breasts to try and win her over. But it didn't work, and now she's looking for a new arsehole. <laughs> Gazza, of course... Oh. Oh. Gazza, of course, has now been on a rehabilitation course and completely sobered up. He says he wishes he hadn't drunk so much, but his biggest regret is that he never played for England. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Gary's team, who do you think inflicted this on the public? I remember waiting for hours to get David Gower's autograph at Hampshire Cricket Club when Leicestershire came down. Eventually he signed, and it had a profound effect on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which young, Very impressionable sad. and quite frankly rather sad person <laughs> wrote that? Waiting hours for David Gower's autograph. Obviously not batting them, were you? No. <laughs> Or was it a June Whitfield fan who got mixed up? I actually got David's autograph and I was a big fan. He's my sporting hero when I was a child. Did he really? charge you for it? It's true. That's a true story, That's actually. True story. That's a true story. You've told me that before. Yeah. But did it, it have a profound effect on you? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to work out how old this person is. Or how, how old's David? <laughs> How old well, are you? I, <laughs> I don't know, but he fought in the First World War. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, come on, what 41. age would this you person have been? 40, 41. You've got to think of somebody good. young. Yeah. yeah, but he's, he's 41 in badger years, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Roger, where are you from? I used to live in, uh, in Hampshire. <laughs> If you're in well, he, he wouldn't have been so silly, would he? Yeah, he must is, have it, is it Roger? Is it Roger? Ooh, very, 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 very good it indeed. Was. Yes, three points. Oh, it was indeed. Wow! 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 I got that because that's the only page of your book that I read. <laughs> <laughs> what was your autobiography called? The only called? page I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> what was your autobiography called? Called How Long's the Course? Yeah, and you're a 400 metres runner, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Roger's not biased. His book also has something to say about our other team captain. By looking at the pot noodle ingredients, I cleared my conscience and <laughs> thought, if Gary Lineker can do crisps, then why not do this? <laughs> if a kid is going to snack on something, they could do a lot worse than a pot noodle. <laughs> Roger Black there clearing his conscience and his mortgage in one fell swoop. <laughs> Why do they have, like, him advertising crisps and him advertising pot noodles when I'm <laughs> only the... <laughs> and so at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have six. <laughs> Incidentally, I don't know if any of you saw the mirror the other day, but they had a poll to find out Britain's brainiest sports person and who should be in there at number two and number four, but Gary Lineker and Roger Black. <laughs> if you're wondering what happened to David Gower, he was just outside the list at number 12, one place behind <laughs> Desert Orchid. <laughs> In this next round, we play some unusual sporting footage and ask what's going on. Gary's team, your clip involves the man who's as British as muffins and maple syrup, our very own Greg Rosetsky. Here's Greg, the conqueror of Pete Sampras, doing rather less well in a Britain versus Ukraine Davis Cup tie at Newcastle. Game Ukraine.
So, Gary's team, what was Canada's best loved Cockney doing there? <laughs> Fancy the strawberry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Because strawberries are very expensive. Woof! <laughs> <laughs> but not in Newcastle, they're not, which is where that game was. Was it in Newcastle? Yeah. Was he just showing the Geordies what a tenor looked like? <laughs> Definitely a tenor, was it? Not, it, it, it looked like a tenor to like me. A tenor. Was he? I don't know. Did the <laughs> Ukrainian pay for the court last time? <laughs> <laughs> Did he say to the Ukrainian, "There's a tenor. Go and buy yourself a car and a pair of Levi's <laughs> and a house and an orange." I reckon that Medvedev, the Ukrainian, mm. bet him maybe that he was going to win his serve, and Rosetsky lost serve, so he handed a tenner. I think that's virtually perfect. The oh. exchange of money, indeed, can be explained. Wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Got to give you the points for that. Let's see the earlier incident, which will explain it away. <laughs> So, Greg Rosetsky lost a bet that he'd win his serve and had to give Andre Medvedev £10, which, coincidentally, is the total amount of prize money Jeremy Bates won in his entire career. <laughs> <laughs> David Steen, it's your turn. What's going on here? Oh, <laughs> so, why was the Queen signing that particular football? Is that actually the staff where they make all the replica kits for Man United, you know? <laughs> Could well be. Uh, too many kits, Mr. Ferguson, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 17 a season, it is madness, <laughs> Mr. Ferguson. <laughs> you could almost be there. <laughs> it was in Asia, though, wasn't it? It was in Asia. It's amazing how many Man United fans. That near to Old Trafford, really, but... Uh... <laughs> Shortly after the Queen releases the ball, does Roy Keane tackle her savagely from the... <laughs> Uh, somebody want David's autograph and they got the wrong grey-haired old dear. <laughs> it was Commonwealth Games, wasn't it? Just before that. It's Malaysia, it's Kuala Lumpur. Managed to hold the next one, mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. Bobby Charm um, was there. Yeah. Is this part of her sort of policy, her tactics, to make the royal family more appealing to... Absolutely right. Yep, I'll give you three points for that. Yep. The answer is that as a part of an attempt to modernise her image, the Queen agreed to promote the Malaysian branch of the Manchester United Supporters Club. <laughs> and for all of those who think that Manchester United fans mainly come from places like Cornwall and Norwich, here are some ordinary football supporters showing their loyalties on the streets of Shanghai. Manchester. Manchester too. <laughs> Mad Fred. <laughs> Whilst the Queen was on that visit to Malaysia, there was civil unrest sparked off when the Deputy Prime Minister was arrested for sodomy. Mr Anwar Ibrahim was apprehended by police at a popular gay haunt known locally as Crapham Cromon. <laughs> <laughs> and so at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have nine. <laughs> And it's time now for Feel the Sportsman, where we stick blindfolds on our regulars and get them to identify famous sporting figures using only their hands. David and Phil, you get your 90 seconds first, if you'd like to take your positions. It's excitement. <laughs> blindfolds on, please. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? I'll sign for it. <laughs> <laughs> Your 90 seconds start now. Oh, oh, is that you? That's us. Well, okay, so that's, that's me. So Whoa, hello, ladies. The sound was a clue, wasn't it? <laughs> it's slightly. slightly. Where has he gone? So I'll tell you, these need to, mate. Oh, gee, I hate doing this bit, but... I'll tell you, I'll, I'll consult this out for you later, pal. He's not you shaved. Want, so. Your brakes are fucked. Yeah, shut your brakes, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> this news a bit down and all, pal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm when, when oh, well, you, I don't when know. Can, I think, let's have a look. I'll give you, I don't know, 15 for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look. Ah, 
No, I know what's okay. going to get. No, I'll tell you it, what. No, here we go. Do we have a clue? It's Zorro. It's Zorro. Yeah. <laughs> the finest swordsman in all Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Did, you oh, you petrol? Petrol? Oh. Did you run out of petrol? Did you run out of petrol? Carl Fogarty. Thank you, Carl. Oh, oh, right. Right. Thank you. Signal manoeuvre. <laughs> well done, three points for you there. Okay, Gary and Rory, if you'd like to take your positions, please. Well, come on, boys. <coughs> Where? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. Come on, you can do it. Are you always that bossy? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, I love it. Bipoles <laughs> <laughs> on. Hey ho. And can we, we have our Good second luck, mystery guest, please? Before we go any further, happy birthday, Rory. <laughs> and your 90 seconds, or however long it takes you, start now. Did you say? <laughs> oh, hang on, I recognise this. It's wet, Rory. You're a waitress in Garfunkel, Tottenham the Court Road. <laughs> I think you're. Oh, I say. I mean, what are you wearing on your feet? Oh. How much have we got there? Rory, don't miss out. Oh, dear. It's freezing. Nick, get, Nick, are you, you sure this is a round in a game or is it a letter to Razzle? <laughs> How many? There got? I was. How many have I got? Who yeah. care? I think you've got the general idea. You can stop feeling now, Rory. <laughs> Maybe some guessing would help. This I is, say. It's very wet. Is it Kate Winslet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give one more go. <laughs> How many have we got, Rory? One? I don't care. Um, is it. Um, oh, you get a thousand years for what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Gary, it's not Kate Winslet and none oh. of them going down either. <laughs> Is it swimmers? Uh, is it swimmers? Yes. <laughs> Very good, <laughs> Gary. A relay team. Relay team. Yes. Um, British. <laughs> British. Uh, Commonwealth Games no, winners. No, no, no. You have to have a... Four by 100 freestyle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. in your ice gems uh, now. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that I'm round, sorry. David's team have nine points and Gary's team have uh, nine points. Yeah. We end the show, as ever, with the noodle-eating, ball-signing name game, but this week there's a twist. Every name featured is not just the name of a sportsman, but also the name of someone famous in another field. For instance, Mike Reed, not just a referee, but also a DJ. Mike Smith, not just a cricketer, but also a TV presenter. The teams can give clues for either or both of the two namesakes. The team in the lead goes first, which is neither of them, but David's team can go first, in fact. Oh, thank you. Pass that down to Phil. Pass, pass, pass. OK, Happens and your so 90 really. seconds start <coughs> now. OK, uh, he's a British skier and he's an independent MP. Martin wore a white suit. Martin yeah, Bell. bad at Bing. Uh, he's a speed ray rider. Balding pop singer used to be with Genesis. Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Whoa! Whoa. Uh, Grey haired ex Northampton England Davis cricketer. Still. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yes, British really tennis number oh, one, David Queen Gillen. drummer. Queen drummer. Uh, British tennis number one. Oh, oh, Roger, 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 Roger Thank you so oh, much. Uh, 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 if you be, 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 this I piece of paper. Lloyd George. Oh, no, no, no. Um, uh, what's your, no, the other fellow. Um, yeah. Oh, Chamberlain. Oh, thank Neville you. Neville Chamberlain. Yep. Yeah. Um, former Brazil <laughs> goalkeeper, uh, cartoon cat. Uh, uh, Felix. Yes. 
Okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, Brazilian midfielder and uh, Renaissance genius. Renaissance uh, genius, yeah. Mona Lisa. Painted the Mona Lisa. Leonardo, of course. Uh, Leonardo. Uh, ex Leeds Ford, nickname was Sniffer. <laughs> and he was MP, wrote McKenzie? diaries as well. Uh, um, uh, uh, ben, which was Ben? No. No, uh, no. Diaries. Uh, oh, uh, Alan Clark. Alan Clark. Okay, yeah. right. Alex, uh, yeah. Former Scottish rugby captain, one of Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> David Sarr. <Sarf. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> David Sarr. <Sarf. laughs> uh, rugby league player, player, <laughs> rugby league player um, guitarist in Deep Purple. Oh. Uh, yeah. da, 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 my favourite there is going to be Leeds United forward, Anthony Wedgwood Ben. <laughs> He wrote diaries. <laughs> Moved on to 18, so if you get nine, you'll level Rory, right. and ten, nine. obviously, right. you'll yeah, win the game. And your 90 seconds start now. A uh, Brazilian footballer, uh, philosopher, Plato. Socrates. Yeah, very good. Um, highwayman rode Black Bess all night, didn't we all? Uh, <laughs> heavyweight, middleweight boxer from 50s. Highwayman went to York. Um, oh, oh um, yes. Okay. What's his name? <laughs> Big Turpin. Big Turpin. Yeah, good. Good question, Annabelle. Um, crap, fo crap footballer played for Arsenal and Liverpool. US president? Jimmy Carter. Very good. Um, a, a TV presenter, whose impression I can't do, um, and a South African golfer. Good, huh? David good evening Frost. and thank you. Uh, ex Southampton striker and. <laughs> <laughs> and someone hangs around Clapham Common. Uh, <laughs> Davis. Trying to get uh, oh, attacked no. at knife point. Yeah. This is, um, this is uh, a tennis player and the Minister of Agriculture. So his second name's a colour. Often Brown. associated with. Oh, Dick Brown. <laughs> Brown. Well done. This is, the, um, this is the culture minister. He's also ex Hampshire cricket batsman. Chris Smith. Very good indeed. Well done, uh, <laughs> disgraced sprinter. I think he's Canadian. Uh, ben Johnson. Yeah, ben very Johnson, good. Yes. Oh, um, Everton footballer, also a bit of a crooner. Uh, Michael <laughs> Ball. Michael Ball, very good indeed. Well uh, this is an ex Oxford player, I think, and he's also a suave um, actor from the 60s, 50s. Uh, I say hello. Hello. Uh, 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 I don't know. Oh. Um, Leslie Phillips. Very unlucky. Good. Unlucky. Didn't quite make it. So the scores at that what? at the end of the didn't quite make it, I'm afraid. Did we win? No, he didn't. The we scores at the end of the round. Gary's team up 17, yeah, but this no. week's winners with 18 <laughs> of David's <Yeah>. team. <laughs> So it's thanks to Gary, Rory and Annabelle, David, Phil and Roger. We're all off to get the Queen to sign our balls. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Over on BBC Two in a couple of minutes, Clay Canine goings on. Rex the Runt and his pals are off on another adventure.